This session, we are happy to introduce a terrific session called Blue Skies on Mars. Our speakers are, well, Cynthia Colloin, Andrew Stricker, and Barbara Truman. Cynthia, that would be me, Lair Lobo, is a professor at Colorado Technical University and at the Colorado Community College System. Andrew is an instructional architect at the Air University at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. Barbara is a graduate faculty member and researcher at the University of Central Florida in Orlando. Welcome all, let's begin the session. And I created a speakeasy and of course, forgot to hit any of those little things, but the good news is I'm also presenting, right? So <laughs> so uh, today I'm happy to introduce Andrew Stricker and I'm gonna turn the floor over to him and I'm gonna pepper the, the chat log with a few of the comments about the slides as we get started here. So Andy, over to you. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Lear. I, I'm very uh, happy to be able to come and share. We've been uh, talking about um, the simulation at various venues for the past several weeks, you know, with all the excitement uh, that NASA um, and others have resulted in in the uh, InSight lander on Mars. So it's very timely. We um, um, have worked with the original uh, simulation with NASA JPL, and we've uh, extended the work into uh, OpenSim. And we've been having a wonderful time uh, building uh, this newer generation of the simulation, and we're going to talk to you about it a little bit today. But part of, you can go to the next slide, uh, Cynthia, the, part of the, the fun with this whole uh, effort is, you know, uh, we decided to meld our uh, science fiction interest. Uh, we're all uh, avid readers of science fiction, and we wanted to really create a simulation that uh, brought the science and the fiction together in, in creative ways. And so uh, we took this quote out of uh, the original script of Blade Runner uh, and to kind of represent... Uh, the, uh, the the fun that we're having, you know, so much of what we've done, uh, we try to create a, a very compelling experience for uh, participants through the simulation to uh, get a sense of the thrill and the excitement of uh, traveling to Mars. And at the same time, we want to make sure that um, uh, we're bringing in the science about human space travel. The original simulation was based on uh, a White House study uh, that was... Uh, uh, championed by NASA to look at all the various uh, options for human space flight into the future. And there's quite a few challenges, as many of you know, and we introduce those challenges uh, in the simulation. Next slide, please. So what we've done is we, we've taken the work of uh, Gary Klein. He, he's highlighted this really compelling um, nature of, of problem-solving where he, he, he says with uh, Anne-Marie Slaughter that, you know, there is a common uh, type of problem that we, uh, we deal with. They're, they're, they can be very uh, complicated problems, and we basically, you know, uh, uh, work on those problems pretty much knowing that, uh, you know, most of the pieces of information required to get to fairly good solutions, but they can be, you know, quite involved. And, for example, if someone gave me a Swiss watch and, uh, you know, God forbid, I dropped it and it busted into a thousand pieces, um, it may take me several years, but I can probably put it back together again. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but when you look at a complex problem, you know, let's say that Swiss watch fell on the floor and someone, when I, my back was turned, came in, into the room and took several pieces away, but I wouldn't know it. I wouldn't know whether I had all the pieces or not. Well, that, that changes the nature of the problem from complicated to complex, you know, when we really don't know for sure if um, all that can be known is knowable. And so, as it turns out, a lot of problems in life are complex. And so we wanted our students to be able to discern, you know, what, what is it like to work on a complicated problem and how to recognize when you're, when you're actually dealing with a complex problem. 
So this simulation takes you through uh, the different mindsets uh, associated with those very distinctive types of problems. Next slide, please. So this process that we use is not new to many of you uh, that are listening to us today. Uh, it, it's a fairly common uh, process of rapid prototyping. But the one thing I do want to highlight, and, and I would like to ask um, Barbara and Cynthia to, to, to share their thoughts about this too, but we have a, a French village that we created. Uh, we're both, uh, I think we're all excited about the French culture and and uh, and even though our French is a bit rusty, uh, we do enjoy coming together each Sunday. We've been coming together each Sunday afternoon for several years where we basically brainstorm in this wonderful salon area. And so we invite our colleagues. And I know I think some of you in the audience have been out there, too, and visited with us. And from from this brainstorming environment, we basically... Um, uh, start a, a creative process to build uh, devices that would support our learning objectives for the simulation. So as you as you go through and you look at this this process, um, we've been um, busy putting together a, a, a federated architecture where we can plug and play different types of um, virtual devices. Uh, we've taken the work of Nancy Nasserian. Uh, who had been at Georgia Tech, now she's at uh, Harvard. But we've taken her work in model-based reasoning and, and we've applied it to our, our virtual devices. And we, we absolutely love um, you know, this, the kind of environment where people can go in and do things with the instruments and manipulate um, uh, what they do and see the second and third order effects of their decisions. And this is what Nancy's work has been about. And her work has been applied in medical uh, communities quite extensively, and, and, and we're applying it in our um, educational simulations. And we've also have uh, worked very hard to build uh, dashboards that uh, present uh, in interfaces for the administrators of the simulation as well as the user uh, uh, data and also uh, feed it back into the game uh, environment so people can see how well they're doing. And so we put the the uh, all the parts together. This architecture it's it's uh, a cloud based uh, architecture, and um, so I'll, uh, we'll have more to share about that here in a little bit. Now, w thank you, Sin, for moving me along. <laughs> uh, the game flow. Uh, is is um, represented here, and I just want to highlight that uh, as you go through the simulation, we've introduced this uh, fun uh, interface, and we call it the Red Queen interface, and it comes from the looking uh, look through the looking glass of uh, Lewis Carroll's uh, novel, and where she encounters the Red Queen. Alice does, and and she's encountering a world where. It's hard to figure it out, much like a complex problem. You know, you don't know if you're gonna. You should turn right or left, go fast, go slow. And and what's really interesting about Alice's um, journey with the Red Queen in the story is that she learns that a lot of things are counterintuitive when it comes to dealing with things that are, are high levels of uncertainty and very ambiguous. And indeed, this is very much the case with um, complex. Uh, problem solving. Barbara or Sin, you got comments here? Okay, next slide. <laughs> so in the simulation, we have um, seven gameplay levels, and uh, so as you as you work your way through um, uh, the simulation, uh, the challenge. Uh, gets um, addressed, so you get additional clues and 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 you figure out basically all the the things that um, the environment can offer you at each of these levels. So you start out at a launch facility and you get on a rocket and you and you fly up to this space station, and from there you you start interacting with 
the uh, the Red Queen uh, uh, systems and you start getting information uh, from um, uh, the team that's on Mars and, and they're facing all kinds of uh, challenges and, and you're basically going to Mars to help. <laughs> and so as you work your way through these levels, um, you, you get um, pretty, pretty involved with dealing with a lot of types of, of information you have to make sense out of and put it together. And you respond uh, back to the Red Queen with open-ended uh, responses. And so we've gone through several iterations of the, the models and, um, and the devices that are each of these levels. Barbara, Cindy, you want to talk about uh, some of your thoughts uh, with these uh, levels? I'll jump in real quickly. And it's just so exciting to be able to integrate some of the existing science that as we look toward how to do this on Mars or in microgravity, it really helps us think about how we can solve this on our planet. Okay, great. Next, next slide. I'll jump in on this one. Okay. <laughs> Um, we, um, we're doing a lot of different things. So uh, first off, it's important to realize all this is running on OpenSim, okay, the latest version. Uh, Andy hosts this from a farmhouse. <laughs> and, of course, um, uh, we've, we've extended the memory since past years where we presented at Open Simulator, And uh, we have this learning analytics dashboard, and we also have this um, ontology that we're basing on, I think MIT's ontology for the semantic web. But we're thinking through how these, how this linked data is all classified, how people respond to these various stimuli, and then collecting uh, this information. On a later slide, you'll see how it goes from challenge to ontology uh, to, to certain outcomes and certain reflections. So we're really trying to take a very deep look we're not just going through and playing a game and falling out the other end. It's not about the win condition. It's really about um, making good decisions, but with, very, with, with mi missing pieces of information, with a high degree of uncertainty, with the inability to breathe, right? Things like that. <laughs> and so if you ever come out and see, we're all wearing space suits. Um, we, we have a health meter on. We start feeling less healthy. And one of the things I injected into the game is I wanted a way, I wanted some first aid. I wanted, I'm so used to playing games in which you recover or where, um, you know, death is not forever, right? So I, so I needed strategies that would help you to recover from mistakes because to me, learning is about failure. If we already knew everything before we entered a class or a game or whatever, there would be no reason to take the class or to play. But So we need a challenge and we need some failure and we need some recovery or discovery from that failure. Uh, so that's what this is about. Over to you, Andy. Oh, it's great. And um, I'm so happy, you know, that, that you, you brought up those uh, aspects that you know, people can actually try things out and see if they work or not. Um, and so what we wanted to do was take their, their you know, way of, of describing how they're making sense of things. And so this, this on, ontological structure that we got from MIT, uh, we, we created a way for it to be uh, augmented uh, and, and added to from uh, other ontologies. And so if you go to the next slide, uh, we've got a, a snapshot from uh, an output uh, that a, a player in the simulation would see. So when you're responding to a, uh, a complex challenge by the Red Queen during gameplay, um, you'll get this type of uh, feedback. And so what you'll see is that um, the, uh, the AI engine will break out all the constructs in your open-ended response, and it will map your constructs to topic areas that it retrieves uh, in, through the ontology, and then it assigns a relevance score, and these relevance scores can be weighted by the instructors, and then it offers up these links for further exploration, so it maps to the science uh, related to the, the complex challenge that you're being introduced with. And so, um, so in this way, you, you sort of get a... a, 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 a 
a mechanism to help people understand um, that and when you're dealing with complex problems, there's, there's multiple dimensions you have to pay attention to. And usually, those dimensions are interdependent. And so you have to make sense out of these interdependencies. And so the, uh, the engine actually uh, gives that kind of feedback to, to help people understand uh, all the different relationships that might be uh, at play as you're looking at the, the complex challenge. I'm and sorry, here, Andy, I'm about to move you forward. Uh, it'll take just a moment for everyone to hear. But, um, and thank you. This architecture is amazing. Uh, and the reason it is is it's so extensible, adaptable, and, of course, off- offers opportunities for others to collaborate. Go ahead, Andy. Well, thank you. The, 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 uh, as I mentioned before, it, it's a federated uh, design. So uh, there's the databases are shared by uh, our Unity interfaces and our OpenSIM and our Echo uh, device. And so, um, so as you see in the illustration, we've, we've got these consoles in which you interact. And there's, there's also part of a decryption uh, um, tool sets where you get encrypted messages, you decrypt them, uh, and, and then you feed them into uh, the Red Queen um, uh, system uh, to help you uh, interpret the clues. So clues are being fed to you through uh, this Enigma-like uh, device and um, and then you take that information and use it to craft your responses. And so, although we we have our prototyping environment on a on a Linux server um, uh, off the cloud, we also have it running on the cloud. And so the data moves onto the Amazon cloud through our API gateway. And then we use a Lambda to turn on certain parts of the code on demand. So we're kind of excited about this because Landon gives gives us a way to only run cloud resources when they're needed, and and then we're also excited because uh, we can share our our databases and our data flows uh, across these different platforms. And just one more quick point as well that. While these environments can be used for individuals to go through, also some of the levels involve teaming. So looking at how the different types of thinking styles that teams would use for particular challenges, this is all part of the exploration. Yes, and we we um, um, are excited about you know creating these kinds of simulations, as Barbara's highlighting, where you know, you can go through it by yourself, and uh, and you can go through it with others. And because it, it it's there's a big difference when you're problem solving, uh, you know, as an individual versus when you're problem solving in collaborative team ways. And so uh, that's thank you, Barbara, for bringing bringing that up. Uh, we of course we got to pay tribute to Robert Heinlein. <laughs> so so this is our time for uh, groking. Uh, if you like to uh, uh, ask questions and. And uh, and and uh, or share some of your thoughts. I, I just from the when I'm hearing about the the presentations today, I see so many possibilities for the future uh, with where OpenSim is going and and the exciting uh, work that's being done by the community here. So uh, it, it's great to be uh, able to connect with all of you. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and I guess as moderator, I better get back to the script. That's the only <laughs> problem with having so many windows open. Thank you, Cynthia, Andy, and Barbara for a terrific <laughs> presentation. <laughs> <laughs> 